Hello, and welcome to another Chalk Talk. My name is Charlie Stokes, and today I'll be talking to you about next-gen firewall deployment models. And in particular, we're going to discuss a design that we call the scalable design. The scalable design, at its heart, is two clusters. We have an ASA cluster, and this is a representation of the cluster, and we've got a firepower threat defense cluster. And each cluster is connected into the switching environment, so we'll have a pair of VPC connected switches. And uh, the advantage of doing this is that we, because the clusters are independent, they're now fault tolerant, so any failure in one cluster has no effect on the other. They're also um, scalable to whatever performance value we need to meet. So if we need two ASAs and four firepower threat defenses to meet the security feature throughput that you require, we can do that. And as traffic enters the switch, It'll proceed up through the ASA cluster and then back down from the ASA cluster and then up through the FTD cluster, back down through the FTD cluster, and then off to the inside network or wherever else it might be headed. And so, again, I mentioned some of the pros and cons here, uh, or some of the pros. Uh, the independence of the clusters gives us uh, fault tolerance, uh, resilience, so one cluster doesn't impact the other in terms of uh, flows and, and uh, failures of any device inside the cluster. There's also the fact that it's, uh, again, uh, independent, so we can scale each out to the needs that we require. And here's the scalable NGFW design with the packet flow through the switch, through the ASA cluster, followed by the FTD cluster, and off to the inside. Next, we're going to talk about the physical deployment model for the scalable design. The scalable design, again, is a pair of clusters, one with ASA, well, Here's your ASA cluster. And again, just like normal, we connect the ASA cluster into a pair of switches using virtual port channels, VPCs. And then as always, we have a cluster control link that goes off generally to another pair of switches. Could be the same switches, could be different, depending on your deployment model and your, design, and your requirements. And, um, the ASA, again, is in a cluster and connected to a pair of switches. And in the scalable design, we have another cluster right behind it that's comprised of FTD, Firepower Threat Defense. And Firepower Threat Defense, again, is connected in just like the ASA cluster. Again, a pair of uh, virtual port channels going to the switches, cluster control links coming off to another pair of switches over here to allow all of our CCL data to flow, and uh, packet flow through here, through this design. Starting from the outside, packets would flow into your switch, go through the cluster, come back to the switch. From the switch, they would flow through your firepower threat defense cluster, and back to the switch, and then onto the inside network. Next, let's talk about the logical deployment, where we can show the interfaces and the VLANs associated with each device. So again, traffic is going to come from the outside internet, and it comes down, and uh, let's say it's coming in on a specific VLAN on your switching environment, and each context of your ASA, and again, this is an ASA logical uh, device here, so it's the cluster in, represented as one device, and so now I'm going to use multiple colors here for our context, so I can have Context 1 and Context 2. Each one has an interface on the outside VLAN potentially. They may be on their own independent VLANs, but in this case it doesn't matter. Uh, however you would normally set this up, uh, you'll continue to, you know, it would this be, however you normally set this up, this is how uh, uh, one, one instance of how you might arrange this. So packets will come in from VLAN 900 into context one or context two. Uh, out of context one, you may have one or more uh, interfaces headed uh, to the inside network or to a DMZ network. We'll talk about one in this particular instance. So in this case, uh, we'll have one interface coming in and let's say context one, VLAN 910 uh, will come in on the inside of context one and go back to the switch effectively, and then it would proceed through there to 
your FTD deployment. And on FTD, packets would come in on VLAN 910 and we're creating what we call bridge virtual interfaces. So BVIs, we deploy this as a layer two firewall and BVI one would translate VLAN 9, 910 on one side to VLAN 920 on the other. And we would deploy all of our policy specific to context one and BVI one using security zones in FTD. For context two here, again, it's gonna drop its packets off on a different interface. In this case, we'll call it 915. Those packets will uh, be fed into Firepower Threat Defense Cluster. And here, this would go through on Firepower Threat Defense. We would take in packets on BVI2. And BVI2 is cross-connected over and uh, it will drop its packets on the inside after we implement policy on VLAN 925. So packets come in on 900, depending on which context they're headed to, either context one, we'll, they'll exit the ASA on, on VLAN 910, go through BVI one on firepower threat defense. So packets come in from the internet, into your, ASA, into your ASA cluster on VLAN 900 using one of two different contexts in this case, context one or context two. They'll exit the ASA on this case in context one on 910 and in context two on 915. They'll enter your firepower threat defense cluster either on BVI one, which matches up to context one or BVI two, which matches up to context two and they'll exit the Firepower Threat Defense Cluster on VLANs 920 or 925. What this allows us to do is now we can build, uh, with our multi-context design here, we can build differentiated policy per context inside of our ASA and allow policy for BVI1 to apply only to packets traversing this particular portion of the network and packets that come in from context two to go through BVI2 and exit into the network here. As you add in more VLANs, if you had different VLANs here, uh, per context, you could add another VLAN, it would exit on a different VLAN on the inside, and it would enter on a different BVI, we would build a new BVI where it would exit, it'd be translated to a different VLAN and exit to the interior network here. And again, so uh, data that traverses context one and exits out a different interface, maybe a DMZ interface, we could have differentiated policy for that. Same thing for context two, if you had two or three, they would come down and each be their own BVI interfaces, allowing us to differentiate the policy in FTD and build zones to allow, a, to allow that differentiation and allow easy segmentation of that policy. On the ASA side, again, we have normal context capabilities to allow policy segmentation and packets are set uh, are segregated through the whole design, through ASA and through the FTD cluster. And uh, this concludes uh, the scalable design. Thank you very much for your time.